I think it's about time we sit down and talk about the Heralds again, specifically the role they played in Rhythm of War. Because things have uh, not been going super well for our ancient friends. Rhythm of War has begun to lift the curtain on the full scope of their ailments, and Sandman Sanderson has given us more than enough information to warrant a follow-up on the Heralds and what they've been up to. If you missed the first Heralds video, you can check it out using the link in the top right corner of this video. For those who have already seen it, I think it's about time we jump down the rabbit hole of the Herald's insanity and explore the impact they've been having on present day Roshar. First, we should reassess each of the Heralds using all of the information we've learned about them in Rhythm of War. We're going to start from the beginning this time with Mr. OG Windrunner himself, Jezrian. The Herald of Kings hasn't been doing so hot in recent years, falling into a deep, deep spiral of both alcoholism and, even worse, hanging out with Dalinar. But at the end of Oathbringer, we witnessed that slimy Kremlin named Moish stab him with some sort of odd, soul-stealing blade. This locks him inside of a gemstone and away from a physical form, just as the Fused had intended. In Rhythm of War, we explore this a little further and find out that the act of trapping Jezrian in a gemstone severed his bond to the Oath Pact completely, leaving his soul to slowly fade away. Nothing now remains of Jezrian, Herald of Kings. We're not quite sure just what happened there, but we can be super certain that Jezrian is super duper dead, as confirmed by Sanderson himself. The other Heralds have mixed emotions about this, and we'll see how a few of them deal with these emotions later on in the video. On my patented, newly updated Yikes meter, Jezrian receives 10 gravestones out of 10. Next on our list is Nalan, Herald of Justice. Not much has changed about Nalan, referred to as Nail by our protagonists. We briefly see him in Emul, where he fights on the side of the Singers and Odium. He tries to convince Dalinar that, no, it's actually Odium that's in the right here, and gets promptly shot in the face by Kord's massive shard bow. Awesome. He doesn't even flinch, pulling out the arrow and descending onto Dalinar's platform. But before Nail can attack, Dalinar somehow uses his powers as a bondsmith to forge a bond into the Herald's past, glimpsing flashes of important life events in Nail's long, long life. We see the abandonment of the Oath Pact, uh, we see Nail fighting, we see him forming a bond with his Spren, and lastly, we see Nail agreeing to the Oath Pact, the thing that started it all. Shocked by what Dalinar was able to do, Nail yeets himself off the platform, flying away behind the lines of battle. In my last video, I gave Nail a bananas out of 10, but I'm not sure that this properly conveys just how far gone Nail actually is. After the events of Rhythm of War, he's being upgraded from plain bananas out of 10, all the way up to nine bucketfuls of banana flavored Laffy Taffies out of 10. That's a lot of yikes. Moving on, we have Chernarik, Herald of the Common Man. We still haven't seen anyone that we know for sure is this Herald, but there are a few theories floating around out there as to who she could be. We'll go over a few of those a little bit later in the video. But for now, she's going to stay steady at one question mark out of ten. Fidel is in much the same boat as Chernarik, with little to no new information appearing in Rhythm of War about her whereabouts. In our theory section, we'll be going over a few possibilities as to who she is, and there are quite a few interesting options. Like Charnaric, she's going to stand at a firm question mark out of 10. Though we have no new specific information about Polly, Herald of Scholars, I was able to dig up a bit of info that I missed during my first Herald's video. Apparently, Brandon did confirm that Polly was the old woman that Shallan sees during her wanderings through the Palanium, confirming my suspicions from the first video. But it gets a little weirder than that. I managed to track down the source that originally posted about this, but they were unable to send me a picture of their signed book that contained the information, unfortunately. 
And in addition to this, words of Brandon are only semi-canonical, and when questioned about this at later dates, Brandon has been cagey at best. For now, we're going to keep assuming that Polly was the old woman in the Palladium, and that the text that accompanied her arrival wasn't just a completely obvious red herring. Because if there ever was a text that stood out as an obvious red herring, it's this. Polly's sticking at a 2 out of 10 for the time being, with room for improvement, of course. Next up, we have Shalash, Herald of Beauty. Ash, as she is often known, has been hanging out in Emul with Dalinar and Yasna while on campaign there. While we don't get many updates about her in Rhythm of War, it should be noted that upon gazing at Navani's flying ship, both she and Talon remarked that nothing like it had ever before existed on Roshar. As both she and Talon are slated to be viewpoint characters in the back five books, they're probably going to have a lot to do then. However, she'll also likely have a role to play in the fifth Stormlight book, considering her proximity to our main characters and how integral she was to the Oath Pact itself, which is, you know, long overdue for a retooling. Due to either her inability or unwillingness to accept how far gone Ishar is, we're going to keep her at a consistent 7 out of 10 yikes. Batar, patron herald of the Else Callers, is an interesting case. In Oathbringer, Teravangian is pretty darn sure that the Ardent named Dova that's working for him is actually Batar in disguise, and we have this reinforced again in the Teravangian interlude from Rhythm of War. During this interlude, he emphasizes that Dova is not to be trusted, citing the other herald's mental well-being as evidence. The thing is, she's never been 100% confirmed as Batar by Brandon. There are a few explanations as to why he hasn't confirmed she is definitely for sure Batar, but I think that after two books worth of setting this up, Mr. Sanderson wouldn't want to pull a bait-and-switch revealing her as a different herald. But it is definitely still a possibility. As far as we know, she's still in Carbranth, and considering Caravangian's, uh, recent promotion, I think we can say she's in a position to willingly serve Odium. I still wouldn't trust her judgment, though, and it remains to be seen just how deeply her madness goes. She's going to tentatively stay where she was in the meter as well, resting at an even 5 out of 10, yikes. Okay. Here's where things start to really diverge from my original list. Rhythm of War really pulled back the curtain on the last three heralds in various ways, and all of them have changed substantially from where they were ranked on the list. The first of these is Kalak, patron herald of the Will Shapers and current high judge of lasting integrity, the Honor Spren Stronghold? What? That is definitely new. Either way, he's been hiding out there for a while and hasn't been seen on page since the night of Gavilar's assassination. We do end up finding out what he was doing there, and if you think he was anything but insane before, well... Kalak was known to the Sons of Honor as Rastares, their founder and enigmatic leader. If you recall from my Cosmere Secret Societies video, the Sons of Honor's main stated goal is to usher in the next desolation and bring about the return of the Heralds as well as Honor himself. However, after the revelations of Rhythm of War, particularly the revelation that the Sons of Honor were run by a Herald, it seems likely that Kalak was only using the Sons of Honor for some sort of ulterior motive. His main goal appears to be to find a way off-world, but how that played into the Sons of Honor exactly is unknown. In the prologue for Rhythm of War, we see Gavilar speaking with Kalak and Nail about transporting something from Braze to Roshar, though what exactly this is implying remains to be seen. Kalak is obsessed with leaving the Rosharan system, and has taken extensive notes on other planets and systems within the Cosmere. And he's quite well versed on locations in the Cosmere, but his grasp of realmatics is not quite as thorough as one might expect. Upon the realization that the Ghostbloods are trying to assassinate him to transport his soul off-world, he finds the notion quite funny, as he has been trying to unsuccessfully do this exact thing for millennia now. 
His bond to Roshar as a herald and his connection to the Oath Pact make it impossible for him to leave, trapping him in a state of never being able to die and never being able to leave. And this has caused him to drop into a deep madness. Once known for his decisiveness, Kalak finds himself completely incapacitated when even the smallest decision presents itself, which of course makes him quite an odd choice for the High Judge of the Honor Spren. Though once you consider that Kalak will back anything the Honor Spren tell him to make a judgement on while lending his legitimacy as a herald, the decision to keep him around as judge makes quite a bit more sense. He's a political pawn, basically. We see how ridiculous this can be over the course of Adolin's trial in Lasting Integrity, and we also see that Kalak is well aware of his mental deficiencies, though he is completely paralyzed to do anything about it. All he can do is wait around, dreaming of other planets while scheming to leave Roshar behind. Kalak is going to more than double his previous madness score, bumping him up from a 3 to an 8 out of 10 yikes. Talonel, Herald of War and Bearer of Agonies, is unique amongst those on this list. Like Ash, he also traveled with Yasna and Dalinar to Amul, but that's not what makes him stand out. In fact, he was barely on page at all in Rhythm of War. No, to understand what makes him unique, we're going to have to look at a confirmation Brandon gave after Rhythm of War was released. Town did not break. Yeah, you heard that right, folks. After 4,500 years of torture, Talon still held strong. And he probably would have kept holding strong too, but something appears to have happened to him to have caused the desolation to be unleashed without a herald, or at very least without Talon, breaking. You'll recall, Talon arrived in Kulinar before the Everstorm, so in theory, the desolation had already started by the time the Fused were able to cross over. There's definitely something weird going on there with the timeline that we'll have to delve into in another video because it starts to get really funky. But what makes Talon unique on this list? Well, he's the only Herald tier to receive a downgrade on the Yikes meter. Dropping down from a 4, Talon L, Herald of Chads, receives a 1 out of 10 on the Yikes meter. He still definitely needs some mental help, but can you really blame him? He upheld the Oath Pact by himself for 4,500 freaking years, man. The dude is a storm and treasure, and Roshar is not even remotely worthy of him. Rock on, Talon. Rock on. Finally, at the end of our list, we get to the Mac Daddy of Heralds, Ishar. Herald of Mysteries, Ishar acted as the spiritual guide for all heralds, and yet abandoned the Oath Path just like all the rest. Well, all the rest except one. And much like the rest, he is just gone. Acting as the God King of Tukar, Ishar's been getting up to all sorts of sketchy shenanigans. Rhythm of War really shined a light on just how out there he now is. He retrieved his honor blade from the Shin, which isn't that bad on its own, it is his after all, but it grants him access to all of his extremely powerful abilities as a bondsmith, all without the oversight of honor. He's somehow able to summon a perpendicularity and would have used his abilities to literally steal Dalinar's bond with the Stormfather if Seth hadn't stepped in. This is madness? No. This is Ishar. And that's not even the half of it. He's been using his perpendicularity to send Tukari soldiers into Shadesmar and capture intelligent Spren. Once he has them in his captivity, Ishar has been performing twisted experiments on him, using his abilities as a bondsmith to somehow pull Spren into the physical realm without a bond and killing them in the process. After Ishar flees into Shadesmar to escape Seth and Dalinar, the team's investigation into his quarters reveals scenes straight out of a horror movie. There are bodies of Spren lying on countless tables with their insides splayed open half dissected. They find journals full of notes from the experiments he's been performing, and it's clear that Ashar was doing something, but what exactly he was trying to accomplish with these spren is not clear at all. None survived past a quarter hour, and none came willingly. What was he trying to accomplish? Well, we'll talk about that in the next section, but for now, 
I think that it's more than safe to bump him up from a measly 8 out of 10 yikes all the way to uh, 10 full Rasputins out of 10. I mean, what can I say other than yikes? What exactly has been going on with the Heralds? In this section, we're going to explore a few different theories about the Heralds, where some have been, what some have been planning. I'm going to start off with one that sounded completely outlandish the first time I heard it, but makes more sense the more I think about it. Keep in mind, I don't necessarily believe this is true, I go back and forth on it actually, but it does at the very least seem plausible that the Herald Charnarek is Shallan's mother. Yeah, <laughs> I know, outlandish, right? But think about it. There's the obvious physical similarities for starters, just look at a few official depictions of them side by side. There's also the family's mysterious ties to both the Ghostbloods and Skybreakers. Shallan's mom, whether a herald or not, was somehow involved with the Skybreakers, detecting Shallan's original bond with Testament and attempting to kill her. This isn't the action of one who is sane, but it also doesn't seem like an action that would have been sanctioned by Nail. It's possible that she received the same guidance from Ishar separately from Nail, kill all budding radiance, and went about it in a different way. But that's working backwards from assuming the theory is correct. Let's instead dabble with a bit of deductive reasoning before we resort to that. Here are the facts we know. Heralds are sent to Braes when they die. When a herald breaks on Braes, they are sent back to Roshar. When one herald breaks on Braes, all are sent back to Roshar and a desolation begins. As stated earlier in the video, Talm didn't break, but every other herald did break at some point in the past. Therefore, it would be reasonable to assume that this most recent of desolations was jump-started by a herald that died, was sent to Braze, and broke within a matter of years, allowing Odium to enact his plans for a new, final desolation. There are other ways that it could happen, but this would be the most likely way. And, what do you know, it fits in perfectly with our theory. If Shallan's mother was indeed Charnaric, then her soul was almost certainly sent to Braze upon the passing of her mortal body. And if she broke, well, you get where I'm going. It all fits into place quite well, considering the wonky timeline I mentioned earlier. And it could, of course, always just be a coincidence. But this theory is absolutely worth keeping an eye on. For this next theory to make sense, we'll have to understand a little bit about each herald's individual madness. The individual madness they each suffer from seems to stem from the attributes that each herald is best known for. For instance, Shalash is best known as an artist and her madness seems to be focused around the destruction of art, specifically art about herself. Jezrian was known as a king, a leader of men, and his madness reduced him to being a drunkard in the streets of Kolonar, leading no one. Nail, known as a judge and upholder of the law, is killing Radiance, deciding their fate before the law ever comes into the picture. And sure, he's doing it legally, but he starts with a judgment and works backward from there. The opposite of how any good judgment is supposed to function. I think you get the idea. Okay, let's proceed. A mysterious assassin appears in the prologue of Words of Radiance, having been hired by Yasna Kalin. The text itself draws too much attention to her to be anything but significant, and fans naturally jump to the conclusion that this was a herald. There is no real hard evidence for this, but let's assume for a moment that Lys is a herald. Which one would she be? Well, we can eliminate all male heralds right off the bat, and Shalash seems unlikely as well, though we know she was at the palace that night. Pylaia and Batar would have been in Carbrant at this time, and Charnaric was busy being killed by Shallan, if we subscribe to the previous theory, that is. Which leaves one herald, Videl. What attributes are Videl associated with? Loving and healing? Uh, yeah, that seems to be pretty much the opposite of an assassin, which fits in quite well with our heralds going against their attributes precedent. While this theory borders on pure speculation, it does hold enough merit for me to tentatively subscribe to it. We are pretty sure that every herald has appeared at least once by the end of Words of Radiance, according to Sanderson. 
I honestly can't think of a better place to put Videl. It's just enough of a cameo to draw attention, but not so much that it gives any actual substantial answers. Speaking of pure speculation, however, let's go ahead and move on to our next set of theories. Ishar's plans are still a huge mystery at this point in the series, and I have no idea what to believe about his mad experiments. I have a lot of theories about what he's doing, but only vague inklings as to why. Quite frankly, the topic of why deserves its own video. For now, let's lay out a few quick theories as to how Ishar is accomplishing these feats. So it's obvious that he's using his Unchained Bondsmith abilities to achieve these abominations, but what is going on here on a realmatic level? Some people have guessed that Ishar is somehow manipulating a Spren's connection to the cognitive realm to pull them into the physical realm. It would probably require massive amounts of investiture to accomplish, but hey, Ishar has his own perpendicularity now. This doesn't explain the bodies, though, which appear to have their own organ systems. Spren don't have those, they don't need them. Another explanation is that Ishar is trying to find a way to connect a Spren to a willing human. Sort of like when the Fuse take over a normal singer's body, but in reverse. Basically, trapping a Spren inside the body of a human. If this is the case, it explains the organs, but it also leaves many questions. Why are these people taking on the shapes of these Spren? Is it sort of like how the Fuse change a singer's body? It's apparent that both explanations have holes in them, and that's okay. We have plenty of time to theorize before book 5. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them below in the comment section, and don't hesitate to like and subscribe while you're at it. It really helps the channel out and fills me with all sorts of warm, fuzzy feelings. Much like a parchment being filled with the soul of a fuse. Okay, maybe that's a bad example. Let's ignore that and move on to our final section, bringing this all together. So what can we take away from all this new information, other than Ishar is an insane weirdo that nobody, especially the Heralds, should listen to? First off, all the Heralds are losing their marbles in one way or another, mostly as a result of the Oath Pact. Talon specifically is losing his as a result of the torture that he's endured. Also, one of the Heralds may have even died since the Oath Pact was broken, sending them right back to Braze and jumpstarting the Desolation Cycle once more. While it could have been Charnaric, and I do think that it was, it also could have been Videl. We know next to nothing about what she's been up to. All we know for certain is that Talon didn't break. He's also definitely the best Herald, coolness-wise. Uh, that might be speculation on my part, though. We've also learned that Ishar has been causing all sorts of havoc behind the scenes, though we kind of already knew that, didn't we? Nail's been listening to Ishar, kellogg has been hanging out with Ishar, most of the more atrocious decisions we've seen the Heralds make have been based purely off Ishar's advice. I can't wait to explore his character further before Book 5 comes out, and I really can't wait to see you there. Cal lacks breath. I have had fun talking about all that with you. Check out my Twitter and Instagram for some quality creme posting as well as general updates. You'll also see updates pop up on YouTube itself if you're subscribed. However, I have noticed some of my subscribers saying they don't see my videos when they get posted. And if that's the case, go ahead and feel free to hit the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching today, folks. I'll see you next video. And in the meantime, have a fantastic day.